Hi there, I'm David Katzmeyer from CNET, and this is the Seiki SE50UY04. This model number denotes the first 4K TV we've tested at CNET, yes? This little 50-incher is a 4K resolution TV. That means it has four times the pixel resolution of a standard 1080p television. Of course, you'd expect that to give a tremendously better picture, but at this screen size, it really doesn't. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but first let's look at the external design of the Seiki. The set is a very minimalist around the edges. It really has a pretty thin bezel here. There's really not much to the design except for this unfamiliar nameplate and a little LED along the bottom here. It's a glass stand. It doesn't swivel. Uh, very basic external design. Of course, you look at it from the side. It has that characteristic LED thinness, so that's something in the plus column. The set's features are extremely minimal. The really only thing to talk about besides 4K is the 120 hertz refresh rate. That doesn't mean that this TV has smoothing, however. Unlike most 120 hertz sets, you cannot turn on or off that smoothing or soap opera effect. The set does have minimal picture adjustments. You can play around with a couple of picture modes, but as soon as you change any of the settings, it'll default to a user mode. Um, from there, you can really only play with the most basic settings, such as contrast, brightness, etc. The remote itself is similarly basic. I was a little confused by the many number of buttons here, especially for a TV with this simple of a feature set. Turns out a lot of those buttons are devoted to navigating USB photos and music if you decide to use that feature. There's also a bunch for the built-in tuner. Yes, this TV does have a tuner like every other television on the market, so it's not quite fully a monitor. But it does sort of behave like a computer monitor. Right now, the only 4K content you can really get in your home is computer-based. So I think people hooking a computer up to this TV will get the best benefit for that extra high resolution. On the flip side, as a regular television, its performance wasn't that great. We'll go through those two right now. First off, with 4K content, the company did supply me with a little server filled with a couple of 4K clips. The content wasn't really spectacular, though it wasn't the highest quality 4K content I've seen. Looked a little bit soft. Yes, you could tell there was more detail than with standard 1080p material, but as with all 4K I've seen, you have to be very close to appreciate that detail. On a 50-inch set, math tells us that you have to be about 3 feet 8 inches to about 7.5 feet, that range, uh, in seating distance from this 50-inch TV to actually appreciate the difference. Of course, the further away, the more difficult it is to appreciate. And of course, with lower quality content, you can't see that difference that much. So all told, the 4K benefit on this TV really depends on how close you're sitting. Of course, when I did sit very close, I played a video game on this TV. I played a little bit of Bioshock Infinite. Looked great on the computer with that really high resolution at an extremely high-end graphics card connected to this TV, and that really allowed the game to pop. Of course, if you have a lower-end computer, pushing that many pixels is going to be extremely difficult. So this is reserved for the uh, hardest core gamers on PC. Of course, other 4K content is pretty much non-existent. You're not going to be able to find any 4K Blu-rays, 4K uh, broadcasts, or any other content right now. That's all a couple of years down the road. Of course, with no 4K content, that means you're going to be mostly watching normal high def on this TV, and it's really not very good for its price point. The black levels are relatively light. The TV crushes shadow detail. There's also relatively inaccurate color, although it is the brightest spot on this TV. Video processing is very important because, of course, the TV has to scale 1080p and other high def content to fit the 4K pixels. That scaling was good, but not great. It actually looked a little bit softer than a comparable 1080p TV right next to it. So all told, not the greatest picture quality. And again, for this price point, you do expect pretty good picture quality from 1080p because that's mainly what you're going to be watching. Despite that bare bones feature set, there are plenty of inputs. You get three HDMI, all of which can take 4K up to 30 hertz. There's also a VGA input for computers. Again, that can go up to 4K resolution, as well as a component video input and a pair of USB slots. All told, I can't really recommend the SEK to a lot of people unless you really, really want a 4K TV. Of course, it is the cheapest 4K TV on the market, so it has that going for it. I'm David Katzmeyer from CNET, and that's a quick look at SEK's inexpensive 4K TV, the SE50UI04.